Post Transformation, Metropolis of the Future. And uh, let us leave uh, one uh, seat at the table for Sergei Lovkin, uh, Alexei Dabashin, Sergei Kachura, and Thomas Stelmach are all here. So now. Well, Sergei will uh, join uh, in later on, and uh, he will share with us uh, his uh, viewpoint uh, on uh, these important uh, matters uh, for development, the city regulator and government, which is always important for us. And to begin with, I would like to introduce to you all the speakers. I hope that everyone is here in the room. We'll have uh, all the speakers a chance to voice uh, their views. So, Boris Azarenko, CEO of Vesper, Alexei Dabashin, CEO of Cross, uh, Thomas Stelmach, founder of Thomas Stelmach Planning and Architecture, Marcus Appenzeller, director and founder of uh, MLA uh, Plus, Tamir Kurkiev from uh, Moscow government, Moscow state expertise, Andrei Maligin, managing director of Moss Engine Invest, Oleg Mamayev, president of Leader Invest, Tatiana Tikhanova, CEO of RG Development, Fyodor Sapronov, Ingrad vice president, and Sergei Kalinin, Grad Development. Let us welcome our speakers and experts. We will be looking forward uh, to Sergei's joining us, uh, and uh, I would now like uh, to give the floor to Alexei. I believe that uh, Cross uh, needs uh, no introduction, and Alexei uh, Debashin is its uh, CEO, founder, and uh, main shareholder, and uh, an active player, and who is actively running his business, and Cross has run a lot of uh, really various projects in Moscow and beyond. So, Alexei, judging from uh, your experience, uh, how has the real estate market changed and what are the new challenges that uh, the business uh, is facing after the shared construction law has been amended and uh, what can happen with uh, shared uh, real estate uh, after only the finished real estate uh, can be sold. Uh, how can it uh, influence uh, on different uh, classes uh, of uh, other real estate? Because when one uh, door is closed, others uh, become open. So the assessment uh, that Leonid uh, has given me is really pleasant. So I can see professionals and experts here, and uh, I'm sure that they know more than uh, myself. So I will voice my opinion that might sound uh, trivial, but proceeding from uh, these ideas, uh, we build uh, developers, uh, construction and industrial practice uh, for two, five, uh, five year period ahead. and. Uh, we believe it is erroneous uh, to have uh, a shorter term horizon of uh, planning. What will be in demand? All those present today, we will require the quality of the project starting with the architecture design, the elevators, the quality of parking. Then we move into the quality of the street, the services provided on the street different kinds of service, starting from packs and so on and so forth. This is going to be always in place. This should be turned into the class of uh, houses from 70 to 120,000, working with foreign architects. So uh, is the industry of uh, construction material ready for that? I think it is not ready. Just a relatively handful of factories and constructions here in Moscow, in Moscow region, are uh, working with new technologies, but we need to move faster. For instance, after the abolishment uh, of particular technical details in terms of the building of the houses, so we will not manage to 
uh, ABC brick to, to, to like this way, and we need to cut costs. This is the development of industrial complex. Now, within the framework of new law, which is going to be effective, which is effective from the 1st of July 2019, and from my perspective, the market is going to have its invisible hand in terms of the regulation and legislation. Someone is going to feel better, someone is going to go feel worse, but it is the reality we have to live in. We shouldn't speak bad of the reality, but we need to adjust to the reality to uh, mimic how it is the nature of the environment, adjusting to this environment you live in. Possibly a number of developers are going to go bust on the territory of the Russian Federation. Unfortunately, there is a number of uh, venture companies. There are 18 factories supplying the products, and Crocs is the uh, buyer from 11 to 10 percent uh, different kinds of uh, construction materials. So there are many those bold. Uh, buyers, we very often find ourselves in courts getting money from the buyers. Over the last 20 years, there was a huge crest of uh, the so-called smart people who created many problems in our country. These are deceived investors, citizens. So the law are quite good. We are going to adjust to this law, and we are going to work with this law. I do hope that almost developers uh, are going to work for the benefit of the whole structure. Are we going to see a new crest of uh, other facility units or, or sites? You know, there are unexpected stories. There are micro apartments or co-working space, uh, new class of offices, which uh, was not quite known about 10 years ago, and today it is a huge industry. These are cell hotels. These are the leased apartments. This is getting back to Rio, not the fraud. Cooperation facilities when people build using the shared pool of money. Those who are going to see the opportunities are going to make more money on that. Some doors are closed and some doors are opened. Talking about the sport figure skating, for instance, ice figure skating, uh, there is a narrative program, and the audience doesn't intend. And there is fascinating, breathtaking video programs where all the Russian participants are taking the first place. I'm the advocate for 90% working in the imperative program. And I'm going to call the specialist to, to relate to all the companies. Quite a simple definition, a specialist we need. The specialist is a person with all the flaws and strong features, which every day for over the period of years making the same job. So doing the same job, when we're going to distribute our efforts in all areas, so on the different uh, foundation of uh, standard houses, high quality, they are going to be standards and they're going to shift to the uh, 60,000 or 70,000 per square meter. Uh, along with that, there is um, not uh, imperative program, which is provided by Barclay Company, for instance, where these uh, uh, breathtaking uh, houses and departments in the center of Moscow. But this is an individual program. I think that we need to uh, perfect the polycentric Moscow. And the example we are working with, the Metro Voikovskaya, the Metro Station, Metropolis and Leningrad uh, Prospect, uh, this uh, area typical to Moscow these, and special industrial zones uh, along the Moscow central ring. So, and it created the situation, they created the parks, these walking uh, sidewalks, uh, 70 river station, new offices, new uh, jobs, metropolis. And you don't need to move anywhere from that. So that's the product we need. Thank you very much, Alexei.
quite clear statement. You need to do better. In bad situation, you're going to have Sergei Kachura, who entered uh, development not from the engineer solutions, not with the function of the subcontractor, but he came from the finance, from the bank. He's responsible for one of the biggest companies, uh, which is responsible for uh, uh, A101. Are you, do you agree with Alexei that we need to do better what we are doing or we need to look around? Why do we need future? What direction should we look into? Let's not discuss the law on the uh, shared construction. Everybody has uh, speculated on that and has deliberated on that. We are talking about we're going to see in the future. It's a good question. If anyone who knows the answer, I'm going to take this person for a job. You can take me. You know, before answering the question, what is going to happen in the future, I've got to answer the question, what is happening right now? Oh, our marketologists and specialists in commerce, there is a very uh, irregular situation for the market. We forgot about the season demand and supply situation over the last year. The demand has been growing. We have been trying to answer the question, what is going in fact? And I would like to state it in the following way. The first reason is the affordable mortgage, how trivial it may sound. So, but there is a deep sense behind this short statement. It's a huge work done not only by banks, but huge system developers. It's not a secret that over the last six to nine months, big players on the market, together with the banks, have launched the project to subsidize the interest rate. That's why the affordable interest rate at 5 to 6 point is not the achievement by the banks themselves as the joint achievement of developer and the construction company. A couple of numbers. As for May in Ross Register, on all the municipalities of Moscow, there are 6,200 deals. May is the uh, throw months in terms of the sales. In June, in our company, the increase by 30% in terms of sales. It's clear that we have seen the better situation on the law on uh, protection of uh, investors' rights. There was a kind of a movement to push the buyers to close on their deals within this current period, what is going to be in the future? How do we see the future? Unfortunately, it's very difficult to answer this question, not touching upon a very sore point. The amendment to the law and protection of the investors' uh, rights, the system of investment is changing as a huge developers and construction companies uh, have been investing uh, recently in new technologies, new processes, and new materials. For instance, the projects on the complex uh, urban development, landscaping, all the system development companies uh, at least had one project in their portfolio. Last year, we announced the project on the complex landscaping on the 100 uh, hectares of the territory. We had a special contest, and together with the M MLA Plus company, we uh, got down to the practical and uh, operational implementation of this project. How? should we implement such kind of product in the future, bearing in mind that it's going to be a huge challenge to the industry itself, because we will need to agree on with the banks. We need to consolidate our position in terms of the affordable interest rates for the project financing as the level have been voiced right now. What do we know right now from July 1st, Sberbank? Sergey, I would like to apologize. It's like an anecdote. Uh, however, the person was asked to dance a particular dance. He started to dance a new dance. So we do understand that, uh, talking about the finance and regulation sphere, but not talking about the technical details, which your company is great in, and the sales volume of your company demonstrate that. It's quite clear that you can work with the current procedures. We're talking about these cities, about new solutions from your perspective. A couple of statements which are going to differentiate today from tomorrow. We ceased to sell the square meters. We're selling the 
way of lifestyle. So the strategic plan anticipates the complex development of the whole territory. It's not the comfortable apartment housing. These are the public and city spaces which create a whole city environment. I, I know I'm a fan of figures. I'm a person from finance. They speak by themselves. If two years ago, the average square meter price in the location we worked didn't exceed 80,000 per square meter, today it is over 100,000 per square meter. It is connected purely with the changing approaches in terms of the quality to the product development. It's not just an uh, imageless uh, complex block of flats. It is a housing of new level. This is a new kind of uh, construction development. Uh, this is different layer of construction. There's a huge investment volume, both in the apartment areas and inter-apartment areas. Uh, regardless of the uh, amendment to the law, I believe that this trend is going to be in place in the future as well, as the consumer uh, voting by the rubo for such kind of projects. And the competition is going to be tougher and tougher particularly for the financing of new projects. Thank you very much, Sergey. I would like to shift our conversation to the topic of futurologist, future solutions which might happen. I'd like to introduce Thomas Stelmach. He's a very famous person in the world, more than Russia. He has developed for the Rouge region in Paris, Baghdad, London, Berlin. He delivered the lectures in the best world universities, supported the project of Catalonia, Barcelona, uh, the university. Uh, he's a consultant to the UN in terms of the urban development. Thomas is not going to speak about the financial consequences of this law, which we are sure of. We are going to ask the same question, Thomas. The support, uh, the new quality of architecture, environment, in infrastructure. Uh, what can be the driver of uh, the market of real estate and economic at all? Uh, what the risk and opportunity have you seen in future? Um, well, that's a very big question. Um, but I feel already that we are in the uh, right round here uh, around the table because um, our colleagues or clients, sometimes developers, they are speaking more about the laws and the finance than about the uh, urban design uh, itself, the shape of the buildings. Um, and I think this is very important because um, for me as an urban planner, uh, I have to say it is very easy uh, to draw uh, the plan, that is the easiest part, but then to really make sure that in the future, and that is what you're referring to, that the plan actually gets implemented in a way with the qualities that were originally intended, that is actually uh, very difficult. And I see uh, three components uh, which are necessary there. The first one, and, and you are um, assessing the laws at the moment, is to look in particular in, in Russia about the uh, urban policies and the land use regulations. Because from what I have uh, seen so far from our projects in Russia, and we have done projects in Krasnoyarsk, in Navodashny Chelny, in Moscow, is that while the public, um, the clients, and often even the municipal staff is, does agree what type of city they want, a comfortable city, the mixed city where we can walk, where the children can play, is that the uh, regulatory framework does not allow this. Uh, sorry, my interrupt. Uh, how, uh, would you like to show some presentation? Would you talk before or not? Only just a speech. I have a little presentation. I can show a, f a, a few slides very quickly, uh, but I want to, fine, I yeah. want to answer sure your question. It will be interesting yeah. and yeah. your commentary. OK. Um, it is very hot, so I will skip a few slides and try to be quick and uh, actually go to the point. If this is working here. Um, so uh, what I was saying, we, we have experience in Russia. We won uh, with an office where I formerly worked um, the first competition for the A101 project, we, um, which uh, you are very familiar with, which is different, the Amosil competition. And uh, here the project in Navodashny Chelny. But, and this is the interesting point, 
none of these projects have actually been constructed as they were intended in the beginning. This is natural. But often the projects also fail and stop entirely. And this is what I call the uh, implementation gap, that the project doesn't come to an end. And, and these are the three things uh, that I think are necessary to improve this process. First of all, as just said, to uh, reassess the laws. The regulations are very rigid and I think should be more mixed. We are doing this at the moment uh, with a framework. Second, um, new financial instruments are needed to answer the challenges of the future. Um, let me give you one example. We tried um, with a, a company together in Krasnoyarsk to make a 70 hectare um, plan for a new city extension. And the idea was together with the developer to not have the entire area constructed by one developer, but to actually sell together with the site plan some parts to other developers to in the end have a an, um, neighborhood, an area which is more mixed, more diverse, has more different ideas. But the banks, in this case, were not ready to finance this kind of model. So the idea was there, but the financial instrument was not there. So we need to think in an integrated way. Um, and we are also doing that uh, in Berlin at the moment. So there we did something odd you're all familiar with. We founded a housing cooperative. And that means that the people themselves are financing their own house. Uh, exactly own. what I did example before, like this. Yeah. Exactly. It's an old, it's uh, more than 100 years old. But now with the new technologies, we can bring this model also in the future that not only the powerful financiers can actually develop, but also um, smaller players, and I think this is important. <coughs> um, let me come to an end, maybe. Um, the third part um, is, I think, that the um, focus is shifting towards the public space. And we are here in Zariatia Park, so we are in the best place to talk about this. Because developers, classically, were concerned about the buildings themselves, but I think if we talk about the city, what is even more important is to look at the spaces between the buildings, uh, the roads, uh, the squares, uh, the courtyards. And I really want to quickly go over this. Well, I Can you just please skip for me like six, seven slides, just go through it. And in our last project in Russia, we particularly try to look at the streets and at the squares because we know <laughs> that value is created through this. So there's actually also uh, an economy benefit from this addi additional uh, expenditure for the developers. Um, so to maybe conclude with that, just continue please. Um, all these things need to be unified to develop a neighborhood and then the ideas cannot only come from the experts, as my uh, colleague has mentioned, but of course also the public needs to be involved and engaged because the civil society also here is becoming even stronger and this is a good thing because there's ideas, the people know what they want and we together with them can probably make uh, better projects. That is the value in urban development. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and we have the opportunity to ask three questions from the audience. Please introduce yourself and use the mic. And please, to whom you address your question. Three questions from the audience. So colleagues uh, are shy. Therefore, I will ask uh, Thomas the first question myself. Uh, there are uh, a lot of different model in future futurology about uh, will be city more high or not so high. One of the ideas will be the city of high scrapers and it's like the troposphere touch. Um, it will be a vertical city. Uh, is it um, acceptable? Is it uh, comfortable for the people so high uh, buildings? Is all is it future or absolutely different point about like the village and um, uh, city uh, consider a lot of small villages like this? What's your personal opinion, your forecast? 
Well, I have a very clear personal opinion here. <laughs> um, to address the skyscraper city, we of course all know these amazing renderings of the high rise uh, embedded in a green, uh, beautiful uh, landscape, these visions of the future. I think it's absolute nonsense. I, I think it is for the uh, science fiction movie. Um, technologically, it is for sure possible, but it does not make uh, for sustainable or comfortable living. Neither, I think, by the way, is the future in the village, because the village is also too space consuming. We cannot turn the entire globe with the population growth into uh, an urbanized sprawl. Um, but what we do know is that we can achieve high densities at a, let's say, medium height, you know, at a, at a reasonable height where it's still, uh, you know, not touching the clouds necessarily. Um, so to create a city which has a sort of human scale and still allows communities uh, to exist. I think the community actually is the challenge of the future, and particularly if we look at digitization, uh, media and so on, how can we create new forms uh, of community where young and old uh, can still live together? Thank you. Спасибо большое. Вопрос. Thank you very much. A question? Unfortunately, the interpretation is impossible without the microphone. Could you please ask the speaker to use the microphone so that you can hear the interpretation? So, Sergey, uh, three or four short facts as an answer. It will be like an advertising. So, we have almost a million square meters under construction now, and uh, we have uh, like na neighborhood uh, construction from 9 uh, to 17 uh, floors and that will be courtyards uh, without uh, cars uh, and uh, with spaces and uh, like Thomas has said uh, we pay a lot of attention uh, not to the interior only but uh, to what is between the blocks of flats to parks alleys and uh, in one of our projects Scandinavia we have uh, uh, we give a, a chance uh, to cover around nine uh, kilometers uh, without crossing uh, the highways. And we are planning uh, to have uh, 350, 500 square meters uh, per year for residents. Thank you. Your question, please. The price uh, 45,000. Uh, uh, I would just uh, install the fans and uh, the exterior network. I will agree with Alexei. In some of our projects, uh, we can. Uh, do it for 40,000, but the land cost and connection cost uh, is different. And, so, and the entry ticket in Moscow is different. So if uh, you have your high quality houses in Moscow or Moscow region, you will receive the same net cost as us. And one more question, please, colleagues. The interpretation without the microphone is not possible. I will say that in the recent decade uh, we have seen much more innovations and uh, the number up to 2010, if we have a look at uh, the number of houses and uh, permits uh, for commissioning in square meters and uh, numbers, now 
there are much more even uh, panel uh, blocks and the uh, DSK 10 and peak uh, work perfectly well so I do not agree with you and we have fiber reinforced concrete uh, and uh, different facades and the symmetry of uh, buildings and quality and polyphonic polycentric Moscow that is all in place and uh, there are much more innovations than before 2010 I can support Alexei on that idea as well so let us thank our speakers thank you very much and now I would like uh, to ask uh, Marcus Apolcera, Timerlan Kurkiv, Andrei Maligan and Sergei Abartsumen to take their seats at the table and we will try to discuss a topic of the quality of uh, technological and product solutions. We can see that uh, it is not uh, that fast in development uh, as in uh, computers and IT, but still there are some changes. And uh, the question that I asked Thomas about uh, what uh, strange and new and incredible things uh, we will see in the cities, we will definitely see that. And uh, we have overseen uh, such uh, things as uh, construction on uh, specially, uh, special sand territories like in uh, Dubai, and uh, we have uh, missed uh, the idea that Moscow has become the leader on uh, skyscrapers construction. Some criticize it, but still there are these changes. We can see how the underground city has turned up uh, together with a lot of uh, infrastructure solutions and I'm sure that, that we will see Hyperloop with uh, cars uh, going in a tube and uh, Moscow to St. Petersburg will be covered in 40 minutes. So we will see. So let us address our experts. Marcus, the question I have to you is as follows. And Marcus is one of uh, the founders of MLA plus an international company that worked in Rotterdam, La London, Berlin, Berlin, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and it has uh, done different projects in Moscow and St. Petersburg uh, together with the Deutsche Graders Industrial Fund, and uh, it has a lot of awards and prizes, and uh, Marcus uh, also teaches in different universities, uh, so has a lot of uh, titles, and he also has a degree in uh, banking, which is also very interesting and pretty unusual for architects. Marcus, my question. So Marcus. Marcus. A very different area of the world. Uh, every one city is different, and different strategy and the uh, role of architecture in environment in, in the structure. For example, the uh, Holland, the last 10 years, they uh, did a lot of uh, impact in the quality of architecture. And what is your opinion is the result of this development exactly in Holland and the total in the world? Um. Good question, because interestingly, uh, the Netherlands went through a real estate crisis uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 years. Um, so somehow our marketing worked really well, um, uh, despite uh, all odds. So there hasn't been much of a construction uh, in these years, but what actually happened was that cities actually started to focus much more on the things which, which are a lot less expensive. Uh, and that is basically uh, big investments in public space. And also, rather than investing money in real estate into physical assets, actually investing money into enabling people to actually do things. Because they found something which is really, uh, I think, really important is that when you engage people, you actually get a lot, of, mo a lot more for the money. If you engage residents, you get a lot more for the money than if you uh, only invest directly into, uh, into projects. Because everybody who is enthusiastically working, engaging himself in a project, dedicates a lot more time um, than, uh, than a construction worker which you hire would actually uh, uh, do. So within these processes, you're actually having added benefits uh, both on, the, on, the, um, on the, the side of society, of the involvement of society in actually jointly developing the city, uh, uh, but also on the quality uh, on, and the quality how the city is uh, the, 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 the quality the city is preserved as in, in uh, 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 outside uh, the country and internationally, and I think um, we can see similar trends. We're also working in uh, in uh, uh, many other countries, um, um, and you can see interestingly you can see similar things happening also in a country like China, where you would probably not expect it that much. 
but also there, governments actually have realized that when they involve people early on in processes, they're actually getting uh, projects to a better quality level. Uh, and if it's not the quality level, at least there is a higher degree of, uh, of acceptance uh, for um, the big projects that they're actually uh, pulling off. So I think uh, the more and more um, um, we see um, that actually people are, the residents of cities uh, are actually involved in these processes and also developers actually start realizing that um, that, that is actually a benefit to them because um, you know, who says that all the public space in a project needs to be designed and developed by the developer himself? It could also, you could also kind of involve the, the buyers of the apartments, of the houses, to actually jointly uh, uh, develop uh, the space. Then it's still a developer who is in charge of implementing it, but it's together with people rather than only for people. Thank you. Thank you very much. And my next question will go to Tamerlan. Tamerlan is a very interesting person. He has uh, experienced uh, various roles in this life. Uh, he used to be an auditor in uh, PwC in Ernst & Young in Vimpelcom. He also worked uh, for a large uh, mine uh, construction company in a lot of international companies. And today he heads uh, one of the most uh, important uh, companies uh, for developers and construction companies that is uh, ranking inside Moscow government uh, expert appraisal structure. And as far as I understood from what I read about you and uh, saw about you, your path uh, of increasing the quality of the city and uh, every block of flat uh, goes uh, through ranking uh, mechanisms of all those who do that. How, I wonder? Yes, you're absolutely right. And uh, naturally, what is going on in the industry today, bearing in mind the changes that we have discussed, uh, witnesses uh, serious dynamics in the market. <coughs> And uh, we have discussed uh, different innovations in uh, developers' uh, operations that would enable us uh, to raise uh, the industry to a new level. And one of the instruments uh, that has been under discussion for several years, that is uh, ranking or rating. And uh, that is not about credit uh, ranking, that is a much deeper thing. So what uh, that is all about is that in uh, developers' ranking, and not only developers, but all participants in construction ranking, we assess a lot of criteria of uh, their performance and uh, transparency, including uh, technical innovations, uh, managerial, financial, and other criteria that uh, we incorporate uh, into our ranking. And Timberland, but how do you calculate it? Um, do you, being uh, an experienced auditor, we naturally believe you, but uh, what uh, can be done afterwards and what managerial decisions can be taken on the basis of the ranking? As for managerial decisions uh, on the basis of uh, the ranking, both technically and uh, from the perspective of innovations, operations, risks, and uh, management of the company, efficiency of uh, their projects. So that is a really wide range of decisions that can be taken. And there are certain results. We have ranked uh, the first customer. And uh, Tatiana from Argo Development is present here. And I would like uh, to award her with a certificate and congratulate her on uh, the rating award. Let us welcome Tatiana. And we know Tatiana and Ergo Development very well, so it is our pleasure to congratulate her. So it's great uh, that uh, a smart uh, lady has received the certificate and flowers, but uh, what should be done with your ranking afterwards? Well, we have discussed it with Tatiana. In terms of management, she has received a lot of information to improve and to enhance the performance of uh, her company, to enhance uh, the credibility of uh, her company.
to increase also the benefits to the population, government, and so on and so forth. So if I understand you right, first of all, you send your deliverables to the company so that they can improve on their performance. Yes, that is the first thing. But will you have also ranking for urban organizations and expert appraisal? For example, if I have a high ranking, the expert appraisal committee just uh, puts a stamp and uh, gives me a green light. That is a question of legislature and its further development. So far, it is all under discussion. But I can say for sure that uh, ranking will be an additional benefit, not only for expert appraisal, but also for banking and uh, finance and loans. And uh, we are negotiating it uh, with uh, some large banks. And most importantly, it will increase uh, the efficiency of the companies themselves and their transparency. And that is an innovative product and new methodology that uh, was elaborated from scratch by our experts. Thank you. And we ourselves uh, work all the time with the uh, Moscow Expert Appraisal Committee, and we are sure that uh, their approaches uh, are really good and uh, top-notch and up-to-date. So what you are doing now, Tamerlan, will be an additional incentive for the development uh, for contractors, uh, construction companies and developers. As for the technologies of the future, MOS Invest and MOS Project, the main constructor of uh, transportation hubs, uh, in Moscow and in Russia. We can say that uh, where there is good uh, transportation, the territory around will be developed well, and uh, you are doing pretty well. But I will ask you a tough question. If we have always done what we have done and had what we have had, we will not have what we have not had, and we will not start doing what we have not done. So what have you not done up to the present moment? And what uh, is it possible for you to do in the future in uh, transportation infrastructure development? What uh, should we expect? And what will we see first uh, as a design and uh, fantasies about the future, and uh, then uh, something that uh, we can use in the near three to five or 10 years? So can you surprise us? It will be hard to do so, but I will try. It is obvious uh, that uh, recently the city has been actively developing transportation infrastructure, and uh, the task uh, is uh, to address uh, the current issues of uh, transportation, but we are also trying to look ahead and in the future when we design and define the tracks for metro and uh, road network, we also have to think about the development of the territories uh, that uh, can have certain future, like uh, Moscow Central uh, Circle, train circle, and uh, the city works on that. And our colleague from CROST has mentioned that. But the task of transportation hubs uh, is pretty clear. And uh, all the transport means uh, that are developing today have to unite uh, the network to be able to provide a comfortable and uh, safe environment uh, and transfers uh, for citizens uh, to shorten uh, the time uh, of the trips, the length of the trips uh, to uh, mitigate uh, commuting. As for something that we are not always uh, addressing successfully, that is as follows. We have uh, some experts and we have uh, consulted uh, our colleagues abroad uh, to obtain experience. Not all transportation hubs uh, today are being implemented in the way that uh, we want them to be, and they should be. Sometimes we focus on uh, landscaping. In other cases, we focus on uh, transportation infrastructure, but it is all connected with the density of the city and the legislature and organization of it all. 
Sometimes it is about the efficiency of the investment in resources. Of course, you want to have everything beautiful. You want to have something expansive and rich. But it's not always about efficiency. Nevertheless, as of today, we have a quite a complicated project which integrates themselves in three or four types of public transportation. And we have numerously presented Nizhgorodska transportation hub, Lermontovsky Prospect Hovrina agglomeration transportation hub, including the car station. And this is the link to the railway. I believe that the uh, transportation hub uh, the, about the integrated uh, complex and they, by its nature, due to the restricted area of land and there are huge tasks to be resolved. This is the integration with the sites of underground stations with the railway stretches. These the transportation hub are combined by special uh, layers which distribute these layers. I'm going to give you a comparison for the one talking about the Lermontovsky Prospect Project Transportation Hub. There are more than a thousand of uh, distribution level underground, which uh, distributes the four types of different transportation modes. I can say that these mentioned transportation hubs, from my perspective, can be very Interesting. This is a complicated project in terms of the designing documentation, in terms of the construction approaches, and about the legal issues. So, based on these number of transportation hubs, we have about 10 of them, which are very complicated sites, open projects. We have made a decision to implement these projects by our own resources. We didn't have this task in front of us initially, but we have to do that. And numerously we have presented on based on the Rizansky transportation hub and the mayor visited this presentation we shown us during different mass media interactions. And this is a, a good thing to surprise. Andre, thank you very much. I was quite glad to hear what the organization is doing jointly with the city and how you surprised me. It would be surprising if when we saw, for example, one transportation project and then from one uh, underground uh, station, the person leaves the station to the platform, registers together with the clothes, uh, get on uh, the transport mode, and within four minutes he's leaving for Sheremetyevo Terminal. It would be a real project. It would be a really interesting, surprising project, but uh, I'm not sure how we're going to implement this project. Dear colleagues, we have about uh, the opportunity to ask three questions to our speakers. One minute for two minutes for every question, so please take this opportunity. It's a long pause. Uh, Tamerlan, I'm going to ask you a question. So, how is the rating of the clients is going to influence the finance in terms of the bank? You do understand this quite well. So, under which source are those who invest in today in the transparent technologies are going to get a cheaper loan tomorrow? Maybe it is not legally anticipated, but there's supposed to be some stimulus for that. It's going to influence mostly in the near future. Of course, there, it is not legally binding. Maybe it is not necessary at all. So we, uh, the organization uh, providing rating services, have direct negotiations with large banks. We are demonstrating our methodology to them. And so correspondingly, many of them have expressed their interest in including the rating of Moscow expertise as one of the criteria while considering the financing terms. I believe that by the end of the year, we're going to regulate that and we're going to achieve particular agreements. And they're quite interested in that. Therefore, I think, and by the way, these banks are in top 10 banks. So you do good and you have a good situation. So the question, dear colleagues, I don't see everyone. You can ask from your spots. 
It's surprising. Nobody has a question. Or maybe all the question. We have a question, but Mike to the speaker, please. Good afternoon. Sergei Nikolaevich, construction newspaper. I have a question to Tamerlan, talking about the rating. So a uh, couple of details about the procedure itself. Is it a paid procedure? Is it free procedure? So how do you come up to the construction developer company? How does it happen? An additional question. You said that is going to influence the project financing, the bank's terms. What else is going to have impact on, for example, the license? But it isn't your competence. It's going to be some overlapping with Moscow and Zoe, Moscow investment. Thank you for your question. Very good question, in fact. A couple words about the financing itself. It is not going to be a mandatory criterion for the bank to agree to accept the credit application, a loan application, but it is going to be a criteria to increase the chance of a particular borrower to get the finance. Of course, there are not going to be some overlaps with different watchdogs not going to be in place in terms of the license provision. These are absolutely different things, and we needn't to make it another bureaucratic barrier out of this. Of course, it is not going to be like that. First and foremost, it's the paid service is going to be not very expensive compared with the assessment itself, but it's going to be voluntary basis. Right now it is on voluntary basis, but many have expressed the interest. We have had negotiations with large players in the market. Some of them are presented here, some of them are not. And there are very well-known companies interested in improving their image, improving their high profile. Many companies have been working with the uh, shares, investors, the person who wants to invest in the building, so he is interested in the rating of a developing company, how credible this developer is. And talking about the administrative barrier, of course, it is not going to be like that. I don't see any hands raised. I'm going to ask the last question. Marcos, I'm going to ask you. Experience in different countries and cities. Give me maybe three very short key points about what's the difference between, for example, your working outside and inside of Russia. Something very specific characteristic, except snow and can beer, of course. <laughs> and football lately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, compared to Germany, where I'm from, uh, where it ended much earlier. Um, <clears throat> three things which are very characteristic. Good question. I mean, there's, I think, of course, one thing which is which is which is in a way driving a lot of processes is that uh, Russia is still in a in a phase of transition, going from sort of a socialist plan economy to uh, sort of a free market uh, economy, and all systems actually have to adjust to that. Planning systems are still very much in the tradition of uh, of uh, the Soviet Union, with a very strong regulatory framework, putting a lot of norms and guidelines. Whereas, if you look outside, if you look in the Netherlands, for example, we've just been uh, killing some, you know, dozens of uh, legal regulations and replaced it with one, meaning also putting a lot of responsibility on civil servants. Now, I know that is kind of a touchy thing because you're putting a lot of power into the hand of uh, people to decide on, uh, on, on, uh, um, you know, whether real estate is permissible or not in, a, in one or another way, but it gives more flexibility in the way you you're developing uh, things. At the same time, it also requires uh, accountability of these people in front of the public, uh, which, uh, which in Holland is the case. Here, I don't always see this uh, uh, being, uh, being uh, the fact. So that's what I mean with transition. Um, th the second thing, I think, has to do with, with, with scale, both of the country and also of the projects. Um, Obviously, there's countries which do very, very big projects. If you go to China, uh, you do, you know, they're the same size uh, as they're here, but they're also not bigger. And as a, mean, as a matter of fact, they're actually getting smaller um, um, uh, as we speak. So Chinese developers start to not necessarily make smaller projects as a whole, they're still very big, but they're kind of subdividing them into smaller pieces, smaller parcels, creating um, answers, products, uh, uh, types of spaces, offers for different kinds of 
users and different, if you want, market segments, different segments of, uh, of buyers in an ultimate attempt to actually distribute uh, risk and also to be able to adjust as you go. So that they're making big plans, but then the infill is really incremental. Step by step, you actually fill it in. And it, of course, changes over the course of time because, uh, uh, because the market changes, the demand changes, desires of people change, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think uh, the last thing um, um, is really this um, the, the, the thinking about how, you, how, how a project relates to a city. I see that also the way it's marketed, and of course, you ultimately a developer is selling a product to an end user, but that product is not somewhere hanging in the middle of nowhere. It's actually usually in a city. So um, other, in other countries, there is a, a much stronger drive to actually, in a way, partially force, partially engage developers in actually making their projects uh, uh, more active elements of the city as a whole. So think less project and more city, I would say, is, is, is another thing which is, which is uh, different. Now I see uh, that kind of increasingly happening, also with, I think, quite an astonishing, um, amazing development of Moscow and streetscapes and how people sort of, uh, sort of start discovering the city beyond their own property, uh, meaning public spaces, parks. And I think that could also in the future extend into uh, into uh, uh, commercial projects and in turn also developers who actually make use of all these public assets which are there. Marco, thank, you. thank you very much. Let's thank our speakers for very interesting presentations. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite the third round of speakers. I'd like to invite Tatiana Tikhanova. Sergey Kalinin, Fyodor Sapronov, and Alek Mamayev. We're going to talk, apart from the consequences of the law, the most the spiciest thing is for the last debate, the massive housing and the quality of the massive housing. So there is a managerial dilemma that in three corners of the triangle we draw fast, cheap, and we do understand that they are not going to bring us together. We need to have a particular side, particular corner of the triangle, and to find a particular maximum minimum task at this triangle. So it's clear that fast, cheap is not possible the crisis on the one hand and the requirements for the developers and the construction companies are going to be tougher and tougher on the other hand so the uh, buyers are going to have more rights and to set strict requirements on the other hand an example of our company when we wanted to develop 3,000 uh, ready-to-use apartments uh, in Moscow region with good courtyards with 65 per square kilometer with ready to use flats. Of course, we tried to fulfill all the quality and price requirements, but it wasn't possible to do fast because even to find decoration teams was not possible. One of the solutions we say is by additional uh, decoration facilities to control the uh, doing up the flat uh, fast, high quality, and cheap. So uh, the ideal reality is not possible. What is a high quality uh, housing today? How can we do that? You know, we would like to start with the following. That finally, the definition of the high quality housing is in massive sector as well as before. The quality was associated with business class, a, a light class. Therefore, it demonstrates that the level of our bars is increasing step by step, and people starting to understand that not the square meters that they have bought in the block of flat is the only single necessary thing, but they are looking at different things. So our buy is beyond their own apartments only. It's a good trend itself. And if we are talking about the quality of the apartments, quality about housing, even the law uh, gave up the economic class. And now we have the definition of a standard housing. It says 
that the level of this housing has increased. What do we imply by quality? These are the gate group. This is the location of the project. This is the facade solutions, different technological solutions, the environment itself. There are supposed to be some social facilities, the squares and parks, the leisure time activity facilities. That's how I would characterize the quality of the massive housing which is in place. Talking about what these poor developers should do responsible for the construction of this massive housing, as we say that the massive implies that it is in huge number, it should be high quality and within some time framework, fast and cheap, as we say, with infrastructure at the cost of the developer, and to sell at 65,000 per square meter. This is a problem. It reminds me of the story when a person calls and uh, I go into employ professors to the factories. And where is the place you take the uh, professors to the factory workers? Talking about the massive housing inside Moscow, it is easier to solve the quality issues compared with those beyond the Moscow ring road. It's the quality issue is tackled very, very slowly. I can say that in our projects, which we have been developing and we are going to develop, we anticipate this social environment, we anticipate the decoration of the flats. Of course, we are searching for some materials which can satisfy this quality requirement and be not very expensive at the same time. So the developers are always in search for the solutions. It's not a bad thing, actually. So we are searching. I can give you an example that even out of the simplest materials, we can make a very high quality decoration of the flat. It says that you need to have good specialists, you need to have good mind, and based on that, we should consider the situation connected with the quality itself. So the idea is to struggle and search. Alek Mamaev, the person who graduated from the state governance of Moscow State University, has been always a very good specialist in pharmaceutical business. He has achieved huge success in the development of commercial real estate, a huge portfolio, three millions of square meters in 2017, headed the development company Leader Invest, which we know quite well. So, Alec, affordable, high quality, cheap, fast housing, smart technologies are going to assist us in this respect. Are they going to help us to improve the city state and not to be very expensive? What's new do we have? First of all, I'd like to say that today we have the heated discussion, literally speaking, talking about the temperature inside. This is about the smart technological solutions. Talking about the issue, I'm the advocate for the marketing, driving the market. Talking about new technologies, we very often go into the PR effect. We are saying about new features which are not in demand at all. Everyone is looking into that and sometimes implementing that, but nobody is making use of these new features. Natalia Kaspierska has recently mentioned that in the struggle for new technologies, we are forgetting why we are doing all that. And from my perspective, talking about the major issue, fast, cheap, high quality, we need to do what is required by your customer. That's what they need. How strange it may seem, it is not the true. It's like with the cars. Average level is increasing all the time. We're talking about the new features in our cars, automatic uh, winds. But, you know, there are different cars in different segments, different brands. I'm sure that the housing is not different from that. If you want to make for reasonable money, which the customer is ready to pay, first of all, you need to find your market niche and to provide housing for this person. If you're going to provide the best product for the home market, you're going to be spacecraft, which is going to be seven times more expensive that reasonable price can be provided. It is not going in need. Everybody's coming to you saying that it is not in place, this is not place. You need to find your market niche, to find the 
customer. You need to look into the customer, to look into the customer's need. And he's going to say, we need this, this, and that. So uh, someone needs to have a closed courtyard. If you have a closed courtyard, you cannot provide an open space with the access to uh, external infrastructure. If you think about the particular facilities inside, it cannot be cheap. So these factors are quite easy to share if you know whom you are doing that for. We do understand that this bottle of water and the other bottle of water costs different money. But inside we have almost the same product as Aqua Russia, for example, Rusa. Aqua Rusa is a close brand to anyone and uh, it is appreciated. And I'm sure that a cheap mortgage, which is in place right now, we have talked about the subsidized interest rates. The mortgage is about 5.5% right now. And this is which reduce this enter point for the housing market. Right now, the customer is not buying what he has money for. He can choose any facility on the market. And naturally, that allows uh, to address all the segments of the market and all the regions of the market. Mr. Sabanian mentioned today that uh, Moscow actually gets in all Moscow agglomerate. And in Moscow, the source of business is those who could buy something for 110, 120 thousand in the Moscow region. But now they are in Moscow because we have all decreased the prices and the quality of product is good. And so that is high quality, cheaper price, and the speed is also a key factor because we have to run this business with a small margin. So we do it automatically faster and better. Therefore, there is no dilemma. We naturally get in this triangle in all areas of our business and not to, to get uh, too carried away with the price, so we have to think about the quality. So that is a good driver because of the mortgage. And also, when uh, you created uh, Gold Mile, you received uh, customers uh, who bought from you three or four times uh, more expensive than the average market price because people buy emotions. That is uh, not a pragmatic market. And the lower the entrance threshold is, uh, the more pragmatic it is. Therefore, you need to come up with a good story, and that is what you need to focus on. And Alexei Dabashin said today that the construction industry is underdeveloped, and a lot has to be done there, and I would uh, totally agree with that, because they are the basis uh, of our speed and quality. And if all the chain is effective, and in the previous industry we managed uh, to decrease uh, the net cost uh, twice, uh, increasing the quality. And uh, if uh, somebody told me that uh, somebody will sell uh, for 60,000 uh, per square meter, and uh, be happy, everyone would smile. And now we seriously discuss uh, these levels with uh, the interior, and uh, we also think how to develop it further on. And I believe that is a natural and uh, correct process. Thank you. As for what uh, our tomorrow will look like, uh, we will definitely see only the day after tomorrow. But still, if we sum it up, uh, what sum up what you have said? No extra moves uh, are needed. You just need to do what uh, people are really ready to pay for. And that is clear from the point of your marketing. And uh, we understand what market would like to receive from us. Sergei Kalinin, a person uh, with a degree from Moscow State University and uh, an MBA, now he has Gulls, a signpost company that uh, has done a lot. Uh, that is Quartal, uh, Nasledi, Detskimir, Pekin. And Sergei is uh, number one uh, in annual uh, ranking of uh, top uh, leaders in. Uh, construction industry, according to Commerzant. Question to you, Sergei. From the height of your experience, and uh, a lot of uh, finished projects, 
but that was not a mass cheap residential buildings, uh, they were projects uh, plus. What can you say about diversification of uh, supply and offer and uh, work in different segments? Uh, can it uh, cut the risks uh, for companies, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, can it uh, bear threats as well? For example, Barbara has opted for a way that they build uh, the cheapest and the most expensive uh, real estate. Uh, and uh, you can buy flats uh, both uh, at uh, low and high prices from us. What do you think about the future? Or should we focus on one thing? I believe uh, that uh, diversification in terms of uh, segments of uh, real estate, well, our company is diversified uh, in terms of uh, real estate uh, because we do not uh, focus on economy class. So we build uh, business premium class and elite class, and that is our tough position. Uh, and we are not going to bottom line segment uh, while I am uh, the leader of the company because they are, we love you, the competitors, and you all work uh, for 65,000 rubles. I don't know whether the leaders of uh, urban uh, other companies uh, are happy, but we believe uh, that we, as part of VTB Group, uh, are investors and developers uh, that manage the portfolio and uh, this portfolio has to have commercial real estate uh, both uh, office and uh, trade and in our eight uh, years of activities uh, we had uh, certain downs uh, in uh, real estate uh, and trade uh, buildings and uh, last year we had two larger deals and our income was uh, over 57 billion rubles and uh, these federal laws uh, that have been uh, amended naturally will shake the whole industry that will face a lot of changes but we are sure that office projects will help us and you know that in the recent three years there was not a single office project in Moscow and our new office project uh, that is uh, going to be commissioned next year has a whole line of uh, buyers so we have a diversification in terms of uh, segments of real estate not uh, residential real estate only but I agree that we have to build uh, cheaper and at a higher quality now the consumer is more capricious so to say and uh, I agree with all that marketing drives it all and we are constantly arguing with my commercial director because he is a realist and he thinks that uh, people opt for meters and uh, balconies and I think that people opt uh, for emotions and uh, how they are going to live here and there with their children where they are going to walk and so on and so forth. Uh, that is why we are recreating Moscow of the 50s and uh, 60s uh, that uh, creates a certain nostalgia to the customers uh, and uh, that allows us to compete uh, with peak. Uh, so we build in Stalin style and uh, they build in uh, Dutch style and uh, Consumers can choose, therefore, but I believe uh, that uh, the issue of uh, real estate and residential real estate is uh, in technologies and the fact that uh, we have not yet learned uh, to work fast like Chinese and Japanese and now it takes 24, 26 uh, months uh, to build uh, the average uh, block of flat, uh, but with the new federal law we will have to do it uh, in 14 months and as far as I understand uh, there is not a single general contractor who would be ready to do so apart from Turks but not very well but as for vertical integration with uh, the own contract inside the company we have gone through it many times and I'm against it totally and another thing Madam Kasperska criticized new technologies, but uh, in construction we are far behind IT in new technologies and been 
design that uh, companies are starting to work in uh, now has been uh, used for many, many years in the West, and uh, that uh, enables them to avoid mistakes. And GALS is going uh, to take all the projects uh, through BIM design next year. And we will make all our contractors do so as well. But I believe that technologically speaking, the process is really important because it changes economy as well. And everything is uh, pretty sad with the profit in all uh, segments of residential real estate. But uh, naturally, uh, the faster and the better the quality is, the better the company feels. Thank you. Thank you. And your response is pretty clear. Your strategy is clear, and uh, it is clear what uh, you are doing and what you are going to do. Fyodor. Fyodor Sopranov is a person who has worked uh, for largest uh, companies with deep uh, financial and legal understanding. Today, he is a director on legal in in grad so further the question that i have to use as follows moscow market the way that it exists today the volume the offer the prices the balance and the processes uh, for example, the volume of uh, residential real estate commissioned uh, in the quarter has dropped 38%. And another thing that we have witnessed is that uh, the first time ever in the newest Russia, the volume of uh, commissioning of private uh, residential real estate uh, exceeded the public or technological, so to say, uh, residential real estate, uh, uh, industrial, yes, sorry, real estate. So it is uh, clear that people uh, construct more private uh, housing, and it is clear that it is amnesty, and in the first uh, months uh, people registered any shed. But still, what is your estimate of the price, uh, the volume, the offer, and the product, and what needs doing to be effective in this uneasy market? Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm really happy to be in this pleasant, friendly company. The topic is really very serious, mostly bearing in mind what is happening in the market in terms of regulations, demand, products, and so on. As for what I can say about mass housing, though our company is uh, present in business segment more. So mass housing has uh, been uh, actively developing since uh, 2015, and in this period it has grown by 3.3% and reached uh, around 1,270,000 square meters uh, as of today. In terms of the author, mass housing has now gone away from the economy class, as we are used to calling it. Uh, there is practically no economy class in the market at all. And now all developers uh, have gone uh, to comfort class housing. And that is the main mass housing that is in the market. Talking about the current situation of this year, the volume of uh, comfort class uh, housing offer has uh, declined sharply and uh, this year around nine new projects uh, have entered the market as compared uh, to the previous uh, year uh, where it was 19 projects YOY. And it is compared uh, with the low purchasing power. We can see that in the first two quarters, uh, there have been record uh, prices. And uh, the total record was in the first half of 2018. Uh, there are around uh, 18,000 agreements of shared construction in the Moscow market concluded. And that is a serious indicator in the market. The average price, as far as I understand, is around 157,000 uh, rubles per square meter. It uh, varies, but still the price in uh, the mass segment is the only price uh, that has uh, 
grown from business uh, premium and other classes of housing uh, by around 3% uh, in one year. Colleagues have already mentioned uh, the offer and the fact that all the developers now focus on the quality. And uh, we have carried out a poll around our buyers and around 71% of our buyers voted for certain quality features that uh, the flats should have uh, apart from uh, the low price or affordable price. And a marketologist in any company would say that a flat should have certain features, but here we are talking about some designer features and uh, high quality facades that are interesting. And we say that uh, flats should have uh, high ceilings and our projects of uh, business uh, class uh, have French windows and also some spaces like saunas and so on and so forth. So now people buy more because of emotions. They need to live in uh, high quality housing and uh, the price does not influence that much, though it matters as well. But the purchase now has become emotional and people think about living in this flat and uh, for them buying housing is uh, really one of uh, the landmark events in their life, uh, like uh, giving birth to a child and uh, entering a university. It has always been like that. Well, yes, it has, but now all the developers are focusing on that. Thank you. Thank you. I would agree with you that the market has uh, its clear trends, but there is a good joke that the price per square meter will not grow, but uh, the square meter can uh, get diminished. Colleagues, uh, we have five minutes to ask uh, one question to the speaker. Whom are you asking the question to? All. Interpretation without the microphone is impossible. I will ask a question to Fyodor. So what is the trend as of today in the recent three years? Because the market is changing and the purchasing power is increasing and uh, you have mentioned all uh, these uh, outstanding sales. What is the trend of constructing flats uh, with the finishing, with the decoration? And what is the trend in the future in percentage points? Two years ago now and uh, for your future projects in comfort and business class. Thank you. Strange as it might seem, the purchasing power in the recent two years has gone down, but the demand has gone up. So the square meter has been diminishing. Yes, looks like. The demand has grown on different reasons, including changes in the legislature. As for the finishing and decoration of flats, naturally now developers are going to sell uh, the housing more and more at a uh, high stage of uh, finishing and uh, the housing will have good finishing and decoration at affordable prices. And these trends for market uh, development have uh, been clearly, clearly crystallized and uh, they're evident to all. There might be minimum share of uh, housing without the finishing uh, decoration, but it will not have uh, material value in the market. Thank you very much, colleagues. Two more questions. Hello, thank you very much for letting me ask the question. The question I have is as follows. What can influence the choice of Russian designers? And I mean uh, the environment development, not to the mammoths. So question to Sergei. Sergei, so 
So, the question of designing uh, the landscaping, land developing, what uh, company do you mean? Because uh, there are zillion of them. If we look at small companies, uh, we do not work with them. And if you are talking about giants, yes, we do work with giants because uh, that is a guarantee of quality, a guarantee that uh, their obligations will be met. But uh, we are ready to receive uh, new participants of uh, tender, new partners. So are you open? You are open, right? Uh, Yes, so there are opportunities. The most important thing is to prove that you would be able to do that because drawing picture is one thing, but implementing the project is totally another thing. You know, like they say, unlucky person is a person who will never lose a chance to lose a chance. Yes, I know that we have one minute late left. One more question, please. Hello. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. My name is Dmitry, and I will have a question to two speakers, to Sergei Kalinin. You have said that we need to learn to make housing fast. Should we, do you think, uh, lower the number of floors? And your second question? And the second question is to Oleg Mamaev, the leader in West. When will we learn the transparency of square meter? I understand that it is an amateur question and it might sound silly, but still, the price of square meter now is not clear because uh, when uh, you read uh, the project declaration, there is uh, one uh, price, uh, but uh, the resulting price is totally different. So can we understand uh, what it is? Well, no comment. What about uh, the number of floors? The speed does not uh, depend on that, uh, but uh, the land in Moscow is uh, expensive. Uh, that is why the fewer floors you will have, uh, the more expensive it will be to you. Thank you. And uh, I can uh, also say that uh, Chinese uh, assemble uh, great uh, ten-story houses uh, very fast. Oleg, for us, our net cost is uh, totally transparent. Uh, so for whom should uh, it be transparent apart from us? Uh, uh, tax authorities uh, also understand it. Market and consumers, uh, well, I don't think that they should uh, understand uh, the net cost. You know, the system of open book uh, used to be developing fast uh, in commercial uh, real estate, uh, but uh, in the crisis, open book uh, grows by three times, and that is totally transparent. So let us uh, consider the product and consumer features uh, and price, and that will be ideal. When you buy milk uh, in a shop, you do not demand declaration on the price. So thank you, thank you all the speakers and participants, and I would like to wish good luck to all of us in our uneasy business. Thank you. Thank you very much.